Republicans, as did Meredith McGraw, who's now with Politico and joining us now. Is this planned by the White House? The president's going to say things and the staff's going to walk it back, or do they just do it on their own? Well, it's certainly not helping the scenario for his numbers. As you were talking about his polling numbers right now, usually in a conflict and a crisis, we see a rally around the flag effect for the president, where the American people pull together in support of the president. And we're simply not seeing that right now in his numbers when it comes to his approval ratings, when it comes to how he's handling the economy, and then how he's handling the crisis in Ukraine, too. And it certainly doesn't help, as you pointed out, when members of his own staff have walked back his own comments or undermined them. Yeah, especially when those comments are the president being presidential. When you sit down there and say this is genocide or this is a war crime, uh, it's, it's shocking that the staff doesn't stand there and say the president's words speak for themselves. He is um, the president. We talk, call it the cross tabs in, in journalism, which is you look down into the poll and see what people think on different issues. We talked about uh, Ukraine. He's not getting any credit there. Uh, but also Biden's approval by age bracket, uh, 18 to 34, which should be his primary constituency of all, only 21%. It's actually older Americans who approve of him the most, which typically are the most conservative Americans, may lead you to believe a little bit of what AOC and progressives have to say, which he has not been progressive enough. But Tom Bevan, uh, hardly a, a conservative, certainly a really smart political uh, predictor and, and journalist prediction Biden's approval rating is so low with 18 to 34 year olds he will have no choice but to forgive a huge chunk of student loan debt after Labor Day to try and help Dems avoid complete disaster in November we've seen these little incremental steps from the Biden administration ghost guns uh, ethanol strategic petroleum reserves are you hearing anything from the White House about big major sweeping executive orders to try and and fix this if you will or do something well, I think there's definitely pressure on them to address some of these trailing numbers. Um, it's not just young people. It's also Afri African-Americans, where Biden has seen um, some of his numbers drop. Um, he was at a historically black college today in North Carolina to talk about um, some of his agenda. So they're, they're definitely pinpointing these things, and they're well aware that these numbers are slipping. Um, but, you know, I, I think, too, when it comes down to it, uh, the economy is something that hits everybody. It hits your grandma, it hits your sister, your brother, your mom, your dad, me. Um, and young people too are really mm -hmm. feeling it as they're trying to build out their own lives. Um, they're, they're experiencing um, the, the pinch when they go to uh, the gas pump just as much as anyone else. Yeah, my colleague Marnie Hughes last night on the, the Late Show we were talking asked, what do you watch for of Democrats on Capitol Hill who have to run in November, whereas the president does not. When do they start splitting with the president, both either to the left or to the right? Well, I think you're already seeing some splits. There's been a lot of frustration over Title 42 being re, uh, uh, taken back um, in May. That's an emergency order that would uh, um, allow asylum seekers that were previously banned because of COVID-19. Um, and you're seeing uh, Democrats at the border say that we need to have a plan for some of the immigrants that are going to be coming to the border, to these border cities. Um, and so we're already seeing some breaks um, with, with Democrats on the Hill mm. who have been frustrated. And I saw this uh, really interesting statistic today. I can't take credit for it, but on average, since uh, every midterm election since uh, World War II, um, on average, the uh, incumbent party has lost about 25 House seats and four Senate seats. And for Republicans to gain the majority in the House, they only need yeah. five. And um, if, if things they are going one. the way they are right now, um, I, I can imagine there'll be much more. Yeah, and you only need one in the Senate, um, and you have both chambers. Hey, Meredith, great talking to you. We appreciate it. The president just got to Camp David for Easter weekend. Enjoy yours as well. Thank you. You too. Take yeah, care. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.